I want to welcome everybody to the Liberal Resistance Free Coalition's Coffee with the Coalition. This is an open and informal discussion about substance use disorders and related topics and concerns within Kel the Kelkaska community and Northern Michigan. Um, let's have everybody introduce themselves. I'm Suzanne Prentice. I'm the coordinator of the Live Well Kalkaska Substance Free Coalition. Belinda? Uh, my name is Belinda, and I work with Suzanne as a prevention specialist, and um, I'm also the mom of a son that struggles with opioid use disorder. Thanks. Linda? All right, I'm Linda Solm, and I'm with Up North Prevention, a prevention specialist as well for Grand Traverse County. And I also um, am part of Grand Traverse County Drug Free Coalition and Coalition to Combat Human Trafficking. John? John Supernaw, uh, peer recovery coach uh, slash community outreach point type person at Catholic Human Services. Um, I'm also part of a lot of other things. Uh, <laughs> the Grand Traverse Coalition, the Kalkaska Coalition, the Antrim Alliance, and uh, just recently, and I'm excited about it, the Human Trafficking Coalition. Uh, well, thanks also for being here. do resource tables um, at the Methodist Church every other Thursday. And then as soon as Safe Harbor opens every Tuesday night, I'll set up a resource table there. Uh, and then any other any other place, every once in a while, somebody will ask us just to set it up. Uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and set it up. And on top of that, I have a CPA office. Awesome. So today we're just going to talk about the Live Well Kokaska Substance Free Coalition and, and what we've been doing and what we plan to do in, in the near future. And just a, a brief overview of the coalition itself. We started it in 2014 with the help of Catholic Human Services. Um, we did pretty well at our first meeting. We had a lot of people show up and slowly it started to kind of fall off, which is typical. Um, and then the health department and the um, hospital here in Kalkaska did a, an assessment um, asking individuals in the community what the, the two most important health issues were, and it came back as obesity and substance use disorder. Um, so not knowing that our coalition already existed, they were taught in, you know, talking about starting a coalition. So I was connected to them and we kind of revamped it under the uh, health department number 10's logo. And that's how we became live well. Um, so, and they really gave us a boost and we, oh, shoot, sorry about that. It is probably, I don't know who it is. Anyways, um, so that's how we started, and that's how we got boosted. And our mission and vision statement, our mission statement is eliminate stigma, provide education, connections, and support. And that's for everybody in the community. And that kind of just, it's a short statement that covers everything. So we do everything from prevention to connecting people who are living with substance use disorder to um, connections, programs, um, family members with support, um, and just educating the community and youth and providing that prevention education within the schools. Our vision statement, which we're talking about possibly changing, but it, it's currently to educate the community and break down the barriers that hinder success in addressing substance use disorders. So I'm just going to go over what we've done for the summer. Um, we've had four separate youth events um, that we're working with, with the conservation district. We had a, a biking event with Norte at the Birch, our Twin Birch Golf Course. We had, I believe it was 20 youth that attended that. Um, we provided them with lunch and, and um, 
beverages and and the kids just they had a, a lot of fun we were able to talk to them um, uh, about prevention and just you know um conservation education we always kind of throw a little bit of both in there uh, our other one of our other um outings was canoeing down the manistee um we i think we had eight people doing that or eight kids doing that um the same thing we a combination of the prevention and the conservation education then we had a, a hiking activity over at grass lake here in kilkaska same thing um same kind of education that was real fun the um the kids were picking mushrooms and i was able to use that to talk to them about substances where some mushrooms are edible, but unless they're absolutely positive, if that mushroom is edible or not, they shouldn't touch it. And that's like, like substances. If that medication is prescribed to them and is safe, then they can take that medication. But if they have no idea, then they need to stay away from it. Um, our next, uh, or our fourth activity through the summer was hiking the North Country Trail and an overnight camping trip. The kids absolutely love that and want to know when we're going to do that again. Um, and that just kind of taught them to work together. They put up their tents, um, just, uh, you know, just like I said, working together. And again, we were able to provide that uh, conservation and, and, uh, or, prevention education. Um, we have an upcoming outing with the Conservation District on October 19th from 3.30 to 6 o'clock. It's a fall hike again over at Grass Lake. Um, and some of the things we're doing in our schools, we are inviting Michigan Youth Alive to come in. They've got assemblies on November 16th and 17th. They're going to be coming into the forest area, high school, middle school, and into the Kalkaska um, upper, it's upper elementary, middle school, and high schools. And that's just a, a positive messaging that they give for kids. Uh, they make it fun and entertaining, but they talk about different subjects like bullying, substance use, um, mental health, uh, whatever the, the school wants to pick. There's there's like about 10 topics and the school can pick three of whatever they want the um, Mission Youth Alive to talk about. We also set up a prevention table once a month at the schools. And this year, for the first time, we're going to be going into forest area school. So we're really excited about that. We'll be doing some surveys and just talking to the kids. Um. We're helping to promote the fall talent show. We're also going to be working with the theater club, um, just uh, supporting those alternative activities. Let's see. Uh, we are going to be helping to host and promote Shandy Longcore um, and Embracing Imperfections. She's an inspirational speaker who uh, used to go to Kalkaska schools. Um, she tried to take her life and survived. And she goes around to the different schools and talks to kids about suicide. Um, and she'll be coming in in December. And that's going to be paid for by the Kiwanis our Kalkaska Kiwanis, the Academia Club, and actually the Kalkaska High School will be paying for some of that. Um, the coalition offered to pay for part of it, but um, unfortunately that's not covered under prevention for our grants. So we were not able to help with that financially, but we are going to help promote it and, and be a part of it. Um, we are also planning to do another drug trends presentation within the schools, just talking to parents about the dangers of substances, which we were, we were kind of talking about, um, Linda, you want to tell, tell us again about what happened in Grand Traverse County recently? 
Um, well, my understanding is, and I had read it on Facebook. Um, I mean, and it was it was like a legit post, and even talked to the person who posted it. And um, but I'm not sure I have every detail correct, and I can't find it. But apparently, he was a 14 year old boy, and he, you know, was in sports, and he. Um, was doing good in school, just no problems. His parents even really talked to him a lot about drug awareness and to be careful of things. And um, he went to the mall with his friends and one of the friends offered him what he thought was a Percocet. And he ended up, you know, he fell to the ground right away and the kids ran away because they were afraid. He was found like an hour, hour and a half later and he was already passed away and it was 100% fentanyl. So, yeah, and that's that's why it's important for parents to um, understand the dangers of substances and talk to their kids and continue to talk to their kids. It's not a one time conversation. It's getting the message um, in, into their heads. Um, yeah, that's it's a scary that's a scary thought. Um, I I don't so far that. As far as we know, it hasn't happened in Kilkaska County. Um, shoot, I'm trying to turn down my phone here. There we go. But it's only a matter of time unless we can get that get the information out. Um, other things the coalition is going to be offering to the high school, um, which we're currently in Kalkaska High School, is uh, we're within the alternative education program. We're going to be offering the natural high curriculum. Usually we do the bot bins, but some of the kids have been in the program before and we don't want to bore them with the same things over and over again. So we're going to switch over to the natural high curriculum, which kind of goes with what we do with uh, working with the conservation district. We're also going to offer the prime for life curriculum in loose suspension um so the kids get caught doing something we can um have a group of kids maybe a couple times a year and offer this class um we're also offering the Amer- american lung associations in depth curriculum in, in lieu of suspension so kids who get caught smoking smoking or vaping um in lieu of being suspended will be offering that to the Kalkaska schools or even Forest Area if they want us to start doing that there. We are also offering adverse childhood experience trainings for the community. Um, in the past, we have trained law enforcement, local clergy, uh, foster parent for our foster grandparents, um, and the North Country Community Mental Health. Um, Mary Grooming came in and was able to talk to uh, North Country Community Mental Health, and that that was actually that was a couple. I think that was a couple hours, an hour and a half training, and it was very interesting. Some of our unsuccessful trainings has been with the fire department. Um, they don't believe that they have time to work with individuals in the different circumstances, and that's they said that that's where the American Red Cross comes in. So they weren't interested in having this training. Um, and then the Kalkaska inmates, uh, we, it was last year, we tried to get in there to provide training to the Kalkaska inmates <laughs> to um, help them better understand the reason why they were doing some of the things that they were doing. And unfortunately, the week that we were supposed to go in there, the Kalkaska jail closed and the inmates were shipped off to other jails. We spoke to one of the jails, local jails, which was Leland and I, and we were trying to get in there to offer it. And then the, the inmates were moved again. And now they are all highs, are housed down in Wexford County. So again, we tried to make connections to offer the trainings there and they, at this time, they are not interested. So hopefully we can get our inmates back to Kalkaska and be able to offer that. It it makes it really hard for family members moving these inmates around for a number of different reasons. One of the reasons being that 
Um, they put money on the phones for, so they can talk to their loved one. And when they switched them to a different jail, it's a whole different uh, phone system. So they have to put more money on the phone. And um, if they, it's, it's not super easy to get the money back from the other phone. So a lot of people don't even bother. Another thing that they do is they'll put money on the books um, at the one facility and then they get switched and they have to put more money on the books. And I do not believe that they are allowed to bring the purchased items to the new facility. So this this makes it financially hard for, for the loved ones. Um, also, there's, there's differences in how you can contact the inmates, whether it be writing to them. I know Leelana, you in Kalkaska, you could write on a full piece of paper. Um, whereas in like Wexford and Grand Traverse County, oops, this is what you write on. A very small postcard. <laughs> that's that's what you write on. And it's really hard to get information and you know really talk to somebody on a little tiny piece of paper here. So, you know, again, that's that's real hard for for families and in kids. I mean, we talk about aces and having their their parents in the jail system is aces for for this youth and being able to connect with them is important um, to have that, you know, that relationship with with their parent, even though they you know are in there for different reasons, whether it be substance use or, or other things. Um, some of our upcoming ACES trainings and events, um, we will be training new high school staff and middle school staff at Kalkaska. Um, that's scheduled for November. And uh, on, let's see, we're looking at, at training Head Start parents um, the Kinship Coalition. So what that is, is it's a coalition of uh, foster, well, not necessarily foster parents, but family members who have taken in um, children, and whether it be a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, um, cousins, whatever, um, as long as their kin um, is considered, you know, a kinship. And as it's now not always through foster care, it's just sometimes they just take the children. And so there's there's different issues with that. And uh, just so you know, next month we are having uh, Debbie Frisbee come in and talk about this and how uh, substance use disorder or the, the opioid crisis has affected this. So it should be a really interesting con conversation next month. Um, let's see. We also have an ACEs event tentatively planned for November. Uh, we'll, we're going to be showing a documentary. Um, we're not sure which one we're going to show yet, if it's going to be Paper Tigers or another one. Um, and we'll have another panel discussion as we did last year. This year, we're hoping to be able to have it at the Kalkaska High School. Is that um, something we would if can yeah. I, is that something I can come to? Yeah, sure. And okay, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Okay. All right, that sounds. I'd like to see that. Yeah, be part um, of that. Yeah, we'll definitely let you know. Uh, we'll be doing some planning within the next week, getting things kind of squared away. We did it last year, so we should be able to do it again this year pretty quickly. We just All have right. to get the word out and so people show up. Um, yeah, some of the right. possible things we would like to do with the ACEs as local businesses, groups, and clubs, ju the judicial system, um, medical facilities, and parents. Um, and the, um, the trainings with parents would be continued. So um, whether it be through the school system or through um, MDHHS or, or whoever, we could continue to offer those, those trainings. Um, and then you'll find us a lot in the community. We do a lot of, uh, Narcan, uh, providing the Narcan and Narcan training. 
Um, we filled the harm reduction Michigan um, and NMRE naloxone distribution boxes that we had placed. Um, and just so you know, um, harm reduction Michigan had come up with these um, old newspaper boxes where they can put 48 kits, uh, naloxone kits in it. And NMRE um, purchased some of these boxes through Harm Reduction Michigan and the Kalkaska Coalition placed three of them. Um, the places that we placed them was at the Kalkaska Township offices, um, Bear Lake Christian Church over out in Bear Lake between here and um, Grayling, the country store in South Boardman and the village gas, which is the old save a lot. So there's naloxone distribution boxes there that anybody can go in and they can grab a, a few kits. Um, locations where these boxes were placed by Harm Reduction Michigan is in Rapid City at the village market and Rapid City at the marketplace and next to Kalkushka on 4th Street. So those are all boxes that have been placed where people can go in and they can get naloxone for free and no questions asked. Um, we also offer it when we're set up within the community. So anybody that wants the naloxone, we will give them some and we'll offer them a quick training so they know how to use it and what to do. Um, we set up our prevention table um, all unity, um, Kalkaska Farmer's Market, usually on Tuesdays from around uh, one-ish to six o'clock. Um, we've also sat up, or set up at Alden Days um, at local stores and uh, care, the Kalkaska area inner, inner faith resources. <laughs> so we set up there and we, again, we offer naloxone and um, different uh, resource information. We um, we're part of the Michigan State Police Angel Program. We've got a lot of our our people that are in our coalition are trained for that. Um, we provide comeback sacks to people getting out of incarceration here in Kalkaska County. Even though the inmates are down in Wexford County, they are they return here before they are released. So we're able to still give them those comeback sacks and they're filled with personal hygiene products, um, naloxone, a gift card for breakfast, a resource guide and a personal letter from from us, uh, encouraging them to come back into the community and, and give it another chance. Um, we provide support to families and individuals living with SUD. Um, we clean up syringe sites. So if somebody finds a site within the community with syringes, we go around and we'll pick those up and properly dispose of them. Um, but we also encourage people to dispose of them properly themselves. And we will give out information on where they can do that. Um, let's see, we have our serenity vigil tree and garden. And that's where we remember people that we've lost within our community to overdose and people that are still struggling. We collaborate with many other groups, um, district health department, number 10, Antrim 20, and Kalkaska County Collaborative, in Michigan, and Travers Fan, before the National Incarceration Intensive Coalition, all 45th Parallel Resilience Network, Kalkaska Sheriff's Office, Kalkaska Conference, uh, Conservation District, ATS, and many others. Um, what are our barriers? Well, our, one of our barriers is connecting with the judicial system. We've invited them to be a part of our meetings, and unfortunately, we don't. Um, they don't come. <laughs> um, our inmates being returned back to our county, which we discussed a little bit. Lack of interest in education for school-aged parents. Um, they're either not present. They have the belief that it's not going to happen to them or they have students um, 
let's see, or just not engaged. So thoughts of how to engage parents is to have students participate in some of the activities um, and then play announcements during halftime. And this, I am going to share my screen and I am going to show you guys what Randy had made. Each week, the equivalent to a classroom of high school students dies of overdose across the country. Hi, my name is James, and I attend Kalkaska Middle School. Colin Walker was just 17 years old when he died from a deadly amount of fentanyl. Colin loved playing sports, had lots of friends, and was always willing to help anyone with anything. He was adventurous and enjoyed life to the fullest. His smile lit up any <clears throat> He loved his parents, older brother Aiden, and younger sister Kira with all his heart. He took special interest in helping kids who had different challenges and volunteered in the special needs class. In his freshman year, he started using cannabis, which transitioned to experimenting with cocaine. Unknowingly, he bought cocaine lace with fentanyl, and it killed him immediately. Thank you for talking to your children and grandchildren about the dangers of experimenting with drugs. If you are a Calcasca student, and would be willing to read a tribute to a loved one lost to drugs during a Calcasca sporting event. Please let your school counselor know. So what do you guys think? Puts a face on it. So instead of just talking about it and seeing it, and in its simplicity, it had more impact, I feel like. So yeah. I actually liked it a lot. Yeah, and I think... Um... Obviously, I mean, this is kind of a rough draft, so we're going to um, make a connection with, you know, a, a local student and um, possibly even someone that's lost their parent, um, brother, sister, or, you know, somebody locally. Um, thank God so far, I don't believe we've had any high schoolers or younger past, but um we have a teacher who lost his son. Um, he was actually our first speaker at uh, one of our um, serenity vigils. So we'll probably have somebody come in and talk about that. Um, let's see. So let's see. Um, one of the issues that we're having, uh, you know, as far as barriers is with, um, um we're supposed to be have somebody from the different sectors which we don't have that um and those sectors are youth parents business media school um youth youth serving organizations law enforcement religious or fraternal organizations civic or volunteer groups healthcare professionals, state or local agencies, and other organizations. Now, we do have the the other organizations because we have um, DHD number 10 comes in a lot. Um, sometimes we have community mental health. Um, of course, we have CHS. Um, we have uh, a local, well, Randy's uh, was a bit, is a businessman, but um, who's recently sold the business um, and is retired. So now he's a uh, uh, grand, just a grandfather and um, just a, a community member. So we're having an issue getting other people to the table um, and being a part of this. And it, it's important for us to have um, more volunteers and just uh, um, more ideas, um, more more work spread um, to make it a little bit more easier for everybody. And so different people can offer their point of views and it's not just me or, or just a couple of people. Um, anyways, we're trying to figure out how, how to get those organizations to the table um, for our funding. This upcoming year is the staff is going to be which would be myself is um, funded through an ARPA grant COVID grant and a block grant uh, supplies and activities I believe are going to be covered by donations um, we we cannot use PA2 funds this year which is the liquor tech fund funds because there are not enough so 
Uh, so we'll be funded for this year. Now, next year is another, you know, another issue. Some of this funding is going to be falling off, like the ARPA grant, the COVID grant. So we're not sure what we're going to do um, for staff. You know, uh, we'd like to keep Belinda on. Belinda's really been helping me here and there with with some of the the projects and programs and just uh putting ideas in my head and just uh helping me do different things um and it's it's needed because there's so much work to this and it's not possible for one person to do it all um and I don't want it to and I don't think any of us want it to not um not function, not be able to do all the different things that we are we're supposed to do. Um, anyways, uh, some possible funding in the future could be opioid settlement funds. Um, and as far as, as that goes, I think when, especially when it comes to prevention and being in the schools, we have students in our school that have lost parents to overdose. And I think it's really important for us to be in there and be able to offer that extra support. Um, and then also marijuana funds. With with the legalization of marijuana, there's been increased youth use, normalization, and easy av um, availability to our youth. I don't, I mean, even though it's legally it's supposed to be locked up, I doubt a lot of the parents are, are locking it up. Um, <clears throat> Is there any questions or <laughs> I know it was kind of just a quick overview of what we're doing. You want to add anything, Belinda? I didn't hear you talk about that conference we went to in Lansing. That was really interesting. Yeah, go um, ahead and bring that up. Yeah, we went to um, a substance use disorder, a three-day conference down in Lansing where there were several different trainings, classing, classes, speakers. Um, there was just a wealth full of information and good opportunity to make new contacts and find out more like on the state level there in Lansing, how things work. You know, if you have something you're passionate about, how to get it pushed. Um, we had some motivational speakers, but yeah, it was a great conference. I wish I know that Suzanne had worked hard and there was funds to take more folks from the community and everything would have been paid meals, you know, hotel and the conference. But unfortunately there was just the two of us that went, but it was a great, great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. We learned quite a bit. Um, and it's, it's hard to, you know, we'd love to be able to share some of that information, but there was just so much information. Um, Linda, you were on that, uh, virtually correct yeah i was on it virtually but i there was a class there was a time area like a morning or something i couldn't even be on at all and you also limited on what you could see because there were only a few options for virtual so i did really really appreciate the ones i went to but i think going would have been a much better for the whole experience and to have all the options available yeah yeah. Yeah. In person, it was, uh, we learned a lot. Like I said, there was so much information. I have to look back at notes to remember what, everything that I had heard, but they talked about, um, yeah. I think one of the things, a couple of the classes really stuck in my head. Um, one was promoting um, on social media and how to do that and artificial intelligence, how to use that. Although I'm a, I'm a little <laughs> worried about that one, but um, yeah, just, uh, um, just all the, the ways that you can really get out there on social media to, to spread the word. Um, also was the, the marijuana, um, laws. And, and I actually, I've been noticed this within Kalkaska, it's not legal to have like marijuana leaves and stuff like that on, on the, um, like banners and stuff outside oh, of the, right. the stores um, or anything that has to do with it. And you're not, you, you are not allowed to be able to see inside the stores to see what's in there, um, which oh. I think all of our stores, you can't, um, mm. but 
Um, I'm going to look into those banner things because there are several of them. I'm, I know one, on one of our buildings, there's a big pot leaf that's painted oh. onto glass. Yeah. And then yeah. another one banners with the pot all over it. Um, one of our concerns in, in Telcasca here is when we go down to the farmer's market, the smell of, of marijuana is really strong. Um, mm -hmm. And this is a family event. Kids are there and it, it just, on some days it just reeks. Um, I, I questioned the speaker on what we can do about this. And he said, as far as like, um, going through because it's a marijuana industry or a cannabis industry there's not a whole lot we can do about that but then there's there's clean air acts and violations oh. of that so that's that's the way that you would proceed with that um mm. yeah if just they just simply move the farmer's market well they yeah that's not possible <laughs> so you're not going to get anywhere with the clean air act no, the, yeah, moving farmers markets not possible either. Um, they've put a pavilion there specific, you know, for oh, well, it? different okay. events. But the farmers market has always been there, um, and now we've got this beautiful facility to have it in, and that's where it's at. And I believe that facility was built before um, that particular cannabis company went in so <laughs> maybe some gigantic fans <laughs> yeah well <laughs> that, that's, at the building that, yeah that's the thing is well they just they need a better filtration filtration system is is what i'm hearing um so even i don't know we'll we'll see what we can do about the clean air act i know there's been a lot of complaints about the smell so hopefully they'll they'll have to get a better filtration system. So it, it does leak so bad. I mean, you're standing there six hours and you're smelling that stuff by the end of the day. Um, I just don't feel that great <laughs> by smelling it for that long. Um, and like I said, kids, I mean, there's kids there, there's elderly people, um, just not a, not a good combination for a family event. Um, anyways, I am going to show, we'll, we'll see if I can share screen again here. You know, uh, and to add to that too, Suzanne, you know, with that odorous condition in the village that also in a bad way could pique curiosity of the kids and the teens, maybe that haven't been exposed to marijuana yet, you know, like, oh, that smell, I wonder how that tastes. I think it's terrible. I just think it's absolutely terrible. And I wish there was more we could do. Right. You know, I'm going to share my screen again. Let me see. We're going to watch the promotional video if you haven't seen it. The Live Well Kalkaska Substance Free Coalition provides connections and support for individuals, youth, and families who are living with, at risk for, or recovering from substance use disorders. The coalition collaborates with many organizations in developing programs specific for our region. This last year, we worked with the Kalkaska County Sheriff's Office to offer comeback sacks. Comeback sacks are string backpacks that we filled with personal hygiene products, a resource guide, and naloxone. These sacks were given to inmates with a substance use disorder who were being released from incarceration within Kalkaska County. Our Serenity Vigil, Garden, and Tree are other events and projects we host for our community. These events educate the public and help families remember loved ones lost or who are struggling with a substance use disorder. We strive to help these individuals and families know that they are not alone and that shame and isolation should never have to be a part of grieving their loved one. We also work to create a more compassionate community through our targeted sector trainings such as our Adverse Childhood Experiences Training, also known as ACEs. This helps to eliminate stigma towards substance use disorders and other mental health conditions. The coalition also provides prevention education to our youth and help them make healthy life choices. We have a presence in our schools, creating connections with our youth and encouraging them to have a voice in the community. We are creating and promoting healthy alternative activities to substance use for our youth. 
We work in collaboration with the Kalkaska Conservation District and we often refer families and individuals to many other community and recovery programs. The mission of the Live Well Kalkaska Substance-Free Coalition is to eliminate stigma, provide education, connections, and support to any persons living in Kalkaska County. Learn more about what we do at facebook.com forward slash LWKSFC. I like that. You know, I like that screen that talks about, well, there's several scenes I like, but that talks about, it's like the four things that like eat well, you know, Mm -hmm. and different things like that. So, um, so, um, um, I hadn't seen that before and it goes with wellness, which is what we want is wellness. So, um, and the fact that you live well is pretty cool anyways, but, but, um, having those four, four steps that is wellness, you know, fresh air exercise or whatever it was. Yeah. I loved that. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Very so good. Saul, very good. Saw Good Media um produced that. Um and uh they did it pro bono for us. Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they're they're the ones that help to um uh, who edit the Coffee with the Coalition and place it oh. on the Up North Coalition YouTube channel. Um so yeah, uh, we and we shared this. So we we uh, promoted it on Facebook um, with some of the prevention network monies. Um, so we're able to share it throughout the community on on Facebook. So we're do, we're doing it within the range of Kalkaska and twenty five miles. So so they can kind of connect and just kind of know what we're what we're doing, you know. And that's just a quick one rather than my long drawn out. Uh, yeah right yeah. <laughs> i mean it, it's it's funny <laughs> how doing? with a production like that they can cut it down into seconds yeah. and it's got yeah. great meaning you know yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely well we didn't have a speaker for today so i just thought i could kind of update everybody on what we're doing and we we have a lot of successes um i just i feel like we're making strides um in the right direction um especially with you know a couple of people that have stepped stepped in and it's just not on one person anymore. Um, it, but it can grow more and people can, can help by, you know, volunteering, um, by donations. Um, some of our donations just recently, we were able to purchase more comeback sacks. Um, we were able to purchase uh, little um, stress balls <laughs> that are, look like brains that um have our coalition name on it um and how to connect it with us on facebook um and the kids absolutely love those i mean they're perfect size because they fit in your hand perfectly and and uh so we're gonna we'll, we'll be handing those out especially at a lot of our aces trainings um and maybe some of them to the kids so I would just, uh, what else have we ordered? Um, oh, t-shirts. The kids yeah. T- yeah. Which I have on right now <laughs> with the <laughs> conservation district. See Linda. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. T-shirt. Nice. Um, really yeah. Nice. And then what do I have on the back? <clears throat> Belinda? I, can't remember. <laughs> I was going to have you turn around because oh, yeah. I can't. I don't know if you can read it. Oh, you gotta lift up your hair. Sweetie. Within the bounties of nature, there's freedom for the human soul. Very nice. Yeah, and I wrote that. That's awesome. <laughs> really nice. Yeah, I yeah. like it a lot. Yeah, and it's just uh trying to, you know, we're giving these to the kids and just to understand that going out within nature and doing those walks and, and those hikes and snowshoeing or canoeing whatever i mean just being out in nature just really calms the soul and helps with anxiety and depression and i mean in in today's world um there's so much for for individuals to stress about both youth and adults and going out and doing these 
these natural activities can really help with that stress. And anyways, that's so, so good. Any, yeah. any more questions, comments? Yeah, I have one question. Your fall walk, when is it? I think I didn't correlate my schedule. Okay, it's uh, Thursday, October 19th. Oh, okay. And that's at 3.30. It's over at Grass Lake. Um, I know I'm not in school. Then we'll, what right. was that? Oh. Sorry, um, I had Elijah talking in the background here. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, yeah. I'm going to be talking to the young Marines on Thursday okay. night. Bringing and them, you so have I'll that. find out. Yeah, you have that flyer, correct? Did yeah, I, I yeah. The flyer? Okay, yeah, and so they can sign. So if they can send those to the parents, the link is on there and they can sign up on there because we still kind of need them to sign up so we know how many people are going. Okay. So even, you know, even if it's just, uh, if they're all going to be coming with, with your group, that just helps us to be able to purchase um, food and because and, we will have snacks and okay. beverages for the kids. So, all right, perfect. All right, so any but any other questions or comments? If not, um, I'm good. Yeah, we'll we'll call this. Um, and I just want to remind everybody that our next uh, let's see if I can find it. Our next speaker is going to be. Um, Okay. Lots of paper. Okay. It's going to be um on Tuesday, October 30th at 9 a.m. again via Zoom. And we'll be welcoming uh Deborah Frisbee. She's the parent consultant of the Adoptive Family Support Network. And she's gonna be presenting on kinship, guardianship, foster parenting and adoption concerns and struggles, how the opioid epidemic has affected them and the Kinship Coalition. So keep your eyes out for, for All that. All right. It'll definitely be interesting. <laughs> so. Very. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye yeah. everybody. Thanks Suzanne.